everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we're going to be talking about downsizing the blended home. And we have expert Marnie Jamison here talking about her newest book. It's one of three books that she has. The first one was Downsize the Family Home. And then there is a Downsize the Family Home workbook. <laughs> and then now she has Downsize the Blended Home. Thank you, Vanna. That was perfect. I don't know if you're, you're probably too young for Vanna <laughs> White. Too. Oh, no, I remember her. <laughs> remember her, like, going and trying everything? <laughs> okay. Much more glamorous, but okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay, so this was an outgrowth of the work that you do as a columnist. So you're writing and you talk to a bunch of experts. Tell us a little bit about that. It's just background. Yeah, I started writing this column, I believe it or not, 17 years ago. I've been doing it every week. And I'm just the girl next door who's trying to figure it out. I'm really not an expert. I'm just really curious, and I'm kind of cheap. So I don't really want to hire the experts, but I want to pick their brains. <laughs> and um, and they talk to me because I have a nice audience in 24 or 30 papers nationwide. So I give them a little exposure. I get some advice. I digest it because some of it's really stupid. And I, I pass along to my reader what I think is it really sticks and what makes sense to me. So... Once upon a time, I was writing about something that you may go through. I've been through downsizing my parents' house, mm -hmm. which is super painful. And I was writing a series of articles about that, and I was getting an avalanche of emails from readers. And I said, oh, boy, I think I'm on a, onto a book here, and sure enough. And that's how I got started on all this. Okay. Now, you've, now tell us a little bit about downsizing the blended home and how you have firsthand experience on doing yeah. that. So like, you know, 50% of Americans, I have managed to get divorced and remarried or at least divorced. And now I remarried in 2016, a wonderful man. He was a widower and I had just gotten finished downsizing my parents' house and going through all that. And meanwhile, my marriage of 24 years was ending. I was starting off on my own and I had, you know, a house full of things that I really loved. And as a home design columnist, I thought I had really great taste too. And I was li actually living in staging houses as, wow. a, as a professional. And, and I moved from Colorado to Florida, brought my best stuff, purged all the things I didn't need anymore, and was just filling other people's houses with, with my furniture to help them sell. Mm. And I think, I, so I'm thinking I have like a, a You got it down. Like, I, I'm the I, expert here, honey. <laughs> just you. So you know. Oh that was my line. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so I'm marrying a lawyer who, you know, negotiates for a living. And, and so anyway, as we um, started blending and he was in a house that he had shared with his late wife and they hadn't thrown away anything. They'd raised three kids and he hadn't merged. Oh, and wow. had purged, so everything was still pretty sentimental. And we were moving into a house together and I really had to take a step back. At first I said, honey, I've got this. I'm the expert here. Just, you just go to work and I'll take care of the house. Right. And, um, you know, I, I work too, but he's like, wait a minute. I don't want to feel like I'm living in your house. Mm. And that was like the ice bucket on me. I thought, oh, that makes sense. And I had to step back, incorporate things of his, look at his things through fresh eyes and, and, and make him make it our house, not my house. So you were actually just, cause one of the things that you mentioned, and I think is a big question, especially when you have people who are getting married later, or like you said, getting divorced and married again, there's this kind of, maybe both of you have houses. One person has a house, one doesn't. So how did you guys decide on where you're going to live and how did you decide? Yeah. So, I mean, it, when people are getting to getting together, they either have to make a decision to move into one person's house or the other person's house or get a place of their own, which is really the best. It's really best to get a neutral place because then it's, you know, otherwise the guy, somebody just moves the clothes over, you know, <laughs> makes some room in the closet and puts some space in the garage for the car. Right. <laughs> and you need to a lot more of your imprint on the house. So, you know, you have to look at commutes and schools if you have kids involved and what are you looking for together as your life moves forward? Is it important that you can walk through restaurants or have theater nearby or you want the wide open spaces? So envision what it is the two of you want for your life going forward and find that that happy home. And then if it's neutral, then you can start making it yours jointly. And yeah. I think that's a really good way to do it. I think it's so hard though, right? Because I have a girlfriend who just went through this, right? So she had her own condo and she's now moving in with her now boyfriend. And, you know, there's a, which house is going to get the right, you know, is it the right time to sell? Am I going to be selling my house at a time where I'm going to be losing money? And 
why do we have to move in your house? You know, and uh, my house is bigger, like all these kinds of, of jockeying. But I understand that it makes more sense to just get a new house. But having gone through several moves myself, the thought of moving all that stuff, you're kind of like, no, why don't we just stay here? So <laughs> how did you, yeah. how did you negotiate that, that, I know it'd be ideal to get a new house where the two of you could like find a place where you're well situated for your kids and family. But how did you just, what did you finally decide and how did you decide it? Well, I was the nomad, right? I was like the person house hopping um, in houses I was selling for other people. So I was pretty transient and I didn't have a permanent home. So but and he did not want nor did I did he feel it was right to have another woman live in the house that he shared with his late wife mm. there are just too many memories mm. um, and I didn't want to live mm. in that house in her kitchen sleep in that bedroom you know it was just too personal and he didn't even expect it or want it himself so it was pretty clear to us that that would be what we would do and that we would come into this together so that that worked out and in the in the book downsizing the blended home it's not just my story I talk about a lot of how other people did it. And a lot of times it was, I have definitely a guy moving into a woman's house and I have a woman moving into the man's house. I have two men who were, you know, one man moved into a man's house and in New York and it was an apartment is, you know, this big. So how did they make that work? And there are a lot of different negotiating strategies, but I think one of the most important takeaways, things that I had to learn the hard way was what's more important that you get your sofa or that the relationship survives mm. this so mm. it's love first you need to put love first and yeah. sometimes well, it's hard because there's self-love right like that yeah. sofa has so many warm memories for me i want to keep the sofa so it's more than just the sofa right there is all the memories associated with that stuff um, but before we go into that, because I want to talk about that in the second segment, um, tell me about the people that you talk to and what you learn from um, their own experience of merging and the kind of dilemmas that they faced and how they decided it. Well, I think it's, I think it's really important that when your life goes through a transition, your home does too. And when you're redesigning your life, your home needs gets redesigned as well. Mm. And it just makes a lot of sense. So you know, I talked to a woman who went from being married to being single, and she sort of feminized her life and and made it more about who she was rather than who they were. And there are lots of simple but important moves that are really striking, um, strikingly profound. Finally, when you come home and you're in the in the space of where you're just you, and then as she's moving forward into a new life, and she did with a new partner, how does that work? So I think that was a takeaway. I, t I spoke to designers. I spoke to grief counselors. I spoke to sp folks who specialize in step families because um, the kids so how to get them involved. I mean, all these questions come up. And um, and I just learned so much along the way. And, and to your point you made earlier, CJ, the age in which people are getting married is getting older. And the older you are when you get married, the more stuff you've likely accumulated. And if you're two people getting remarried in the midlife, as I was and my husband, um, you have a whole house full of stuff. You both have blenders and posters and beds and artwork and, and important mementos you've collected from your life and travels and at dining room tables. And there's only one dining room. You do. So I just don't think people think about how does that blend beautifully without it looking like a hodgepodge. I mean, I need it. I need to come home to a harmonious space that's integrated with good lo good looking furniture and the right color scheme. Anyway, and it takes it takes a good eye and it takes some solid effort and, and, and um, consideration. And what did the what did the grief counselors tell you about what was the grieving that was happening? How did that affect the whole move and and blending? So if if you you have to be very respectful of a person's past. And you also have to be respectful of the person you're moving forward with. So in my case, I'm divorced. In his case, he's widowed. And we decided not, the photos, you know, they need to stay on your hard drive, right? Um, and, and things that are really tied, that tie you closely to that person, they're for you privately, mm -hmm. but publicly. 
And anything that makes the new person feel uncomfortable or unwelcome, I think it's important to acknowledge the person's need to have a memory of that time in their life, but not have it so openly in the new space they're creating together. And this is something that's true of any downsizing story is living in the past robs you of the future. Mm. Mm, that's really powerful. So like just even the visual images of your, you know, of who, you used to be. who you used to be in the life you used to have is really hard for the new person coming in and kind of trying to integrate those two. And how about kids? Because I, so my girlfriend moved from one house where she had like three bedrooms to her boyfriend's house where they have two bedrooms and she has a son. And so they're like, is it an office space or is it my son's room? I want him to feel welcome. He's kind of going to college, but at the same time, I don't want to feel like when I've, you know, moved everything around that he lost the space. How do you, how do you deal with the kids aspect and what are the kids issues that come up? And you, you named a fairly charged one because from the son's point of view, she's gaining a man and losing a bedroom. So yeah. where does that put him? Um, so the number one question every child has in this, you know, this happens is where do I fit into this new relationship? Mm -hmm. Where do I fit into the new normal? And it's super important because you do have to get rid of a lot of stuff. But you have to remember there's uh, in a very important, you have to have that person, that child, ha no matter how much time they spend with you, needs to have a sacred place that is his or hers. It doesn't necessarily need to be a whole bedroom. It can be a day bed that is a sofa three, three days out of the week and, and a bed the other days. But he needs, or she, her own bathroom drawer, her own cupboard, her own bookshelf, her own place in the closet. And so when she comes back or he comes back, everything is as he or he left it. Right. But there is a clear place. It's also important to have balance that every child, if you have, maybe you have one who's a superstar athlete and you've got a gazillion photos of him playing soccer or whatever, but the girl's a little quieter and she hasn't had as many robust activities, you still need to make it even. You mm -hmm. can't have five pictures of one and one picture of the other one. You really need to be mathematical about it because they will be counting. Right. Yeah, it, 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 it reminds me of when I used to do mediation and everything has to be equal. Like if you put a blue pen in one seat and a black in the other, they'd be like, well, why did that person get the blue? And why, you know, like people read into the visual aspects of everything, even though there's not a, an intention, but there is. If you are yeah. intentional, it, it actually shows a certain amount of fairness. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, so um, any other things about, in terms of expert advice that you want to share before we talk about the next section, which I think is the how do you know what to let go of? Um, I think we talked about a little bit about that, but I want to talk more about that because that's so hard. So um, anything else to add on just generally okay. about? Yeah, I would just say that um, if you a red flag is someone who won't bend. And if they're saying, I'm sorry, this is my house. I've lived in it. It's beautifully designed. Like, take it or leave it. Mm. I think that's a big red flag. And that has happened. Um, and I have a couple who, um, who came together. They got a house together. They were very different um, in terms. She was sort of uptown and he was sort of, you know, urban. Or, I don't know, they did different lifestyles. It didn't work out. Mm. And they were engaged and they moved in together and they moved back out. It just didn't work. Did they stay and married I, in separate houses? or They're still seeing each other. They didn't get married. They're still seeing each other. But their takeaway was just because it didn't work out doesn't mean it was a failure. It's that they have, they have learned to live in a different way. They love each other. They like being together, but they're not meant to live together. And that's okay, too. There's, there's, uh, there's a term for it, L-A-T, living apart together. Yes. Living apart together. Yeah. And it's a new way that people are, are making their relationships work. And I think people will go, that's something an expert told me, people will go to great lengths to save the relationship, to give the relationship what it needs. And too much closeness. I mean, there may be the thermostat wars or the blanket wars or the whatever, um, but you love each other. So you live apart together. Yeah, I actually have heard, that's, I have a friend that I met at a retreat and she and her husband have a, his and her house. And they have a little connecting cord. I mean, where they go back and forth. And like her, because like she has, 
the sense of aesthetics and cleanliness standards that he could never adhere to. And so they just agreed to be apart. And so they see, you know, they cross a corridor and visit, but. <laughs> I love it. I would think I need their number. That may be a problem. Exactly. <laughs> I, I will. It's very interesting. I actually had someone who lives in a tiny house where they have two tiny houses next, you know, those tiny houses that are like 800 square feet. Um, also has that same thing. So there's all different ways of doing <laughs> a blended household. We've been talking to Marnie um, Jameson about her newest book, Downsizing the Blended House. Can you show your book again? Sure, here Yay, it is. Yay, thank you so much. Welcome, my pleasure. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support, love and blessings.